Hi, in this video we'll try to do some questions involving distance, displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. So I want you to try the exercise from this page all the way down to this question. Okay, so pause the video now and try it first. A few moments later. For the next question, it asks you Next, it said the car has a steady, that means a constant speed of 8 meters per second, how far it travels. So uh, you may simply say, oh, x times x equal to 64, which of course is correct with meter, uh, but I would suggest you to put down the equation still. So uh, how I would do is a speed equal to d distance over time. Again, so uh, you don't have to rearrange the form. Trust me, this is something that in long run, would help you. Uh, you just have to remember the formula in a certain form. Don't try to rearrange it uh, because you may make mistake, careless mistake when you try to rearrange it. What you can do simply is um, you substitute what you know. So speed is x, so let's put it there. And distance is not something you know for now. You want to find out. So put it as d and time is also x second. So you, this is the way that you substitute into the equation first. And then finally you can find the d which is distance uh, is 64 meter okay so this would be the good presentation that i'm looking for for part b then it will be uh, more or less the same so i will still put down the equation once again speed is still x distance this time become 160 and the time is unknown so then you can find out the time by calculating 160 divided by x and that means 20 seconds Question 3 is not calculation but to explain what it means. So it said if the acceleration is positive meter per second square, what does that mean about the velocity? So what you can say about it is velocity would increase. Uh, you can say towards the direction of A by two meter per second in each second or one second all right the reason why i put down this bracket is because if you recall what we talk about the ball actually flow upward uh the the direction of velocity and acceleration could be different so even if you have a positive acceleration it doesn't really mean it would help the number or, or the magnitude we call of the velocity become bigger okay so um, we should specify that this would increase towards the direction of acceleration uh, by 2 meter per second instead similarly if they ask you about negative 2 then uh, it would simply be the same thing so v would decrease again uh, towards the direction of acceleration direction of acceleration by the same thing two meter per second in each second so uh, the main difference is simply decrease when you have negative question four is really the calculation that we are looking for uh, it is asking you something called retardation don't laugh it's a proper word all right retardation in physics means deceleration basically but then it's just an alternative uh, of deceleration so what we would do instead of just making it negative I'll just do it with acceleration first right and hopefully we can find a negative number and that will be the retardation that we are trying to look for so let's call the general equation v minus u over t so in our case we know this should be u this should be t and to stop that means it is the uh, final velocity would equal to zero at the end so let's just put them in so v is zero u is 20 in a good si unit t is five seconds and so that would be calculated to find acceleration so by using calculator or just calculate directly you get negative four meter per second square and that is to say, by the way, you can't leave this as an answer because it's asking you retardation, not acceleration, right? So you can say, therefore, retardation is 4 meter per second square. You can't say negative because when you say retardation or deceleration is negative, 
then it's a double negative meaning. That means it is accelerating in that case, which is not true. So in this case, you have to put retardation is positive 4 meter per second. Number 5 is also uh, using the equation. So let's just start directly. A equals to V minus U over T. Okay, so every time you have to put down this equation and you have to memorize it. For 25, I also recommend you to put down the symbol next to the number. So this one is referring to U. This is T, obviously. And this is A. But then if you refer it as acceleration, then it should be negative 2. So I will remind myself this is negative 2. And you want to find V, obviously. So let's put it down. Substitute negative 2. V is unknown. U is 25. T is 4. So using your calculator, negative 2 times 4 plus 25, then you can get V equals to positive 17 meter per second. So this is the final velocity that this truck would get to after 4 seconds. Okay, last two questions. These two questions are from the past paper, obviously. And so let's try to see how difficult it is. It's actually very simple. So it said there's a snail uh, going through a path of 30 cm in the speed of these. How long does it take? So uh, like we said, write the equation speed equal to distance over time. And we know speed is 0 0.2. Uh, and the unit, just double check both are cm, so we are all good. 30 divided by the time, so uh, we just have to say t equal to 30 divided 0 0.2. So 30 divided 0 0.2 is 150. Okay, so that means the answer is d. So I hope I can demonstrate to you that even this question is very simple. There are people making it wrong still. All right. I mean, for people who answer this wrongly, probably it's not because they don't know how to calculate. It's just because they don't have a good habit of maintaining uh, a careful calculation. So let me tell you again, the way that make yourself more careful is you should always write down the equation in a form that you are familiar with. So like for myself, I like to put down it as speed equal to d over t, this and over time, instead of rearrange it for other form. Um, and then I just have to substitute the number that I know, leaving the unknown uh, as it is, and then just rearrange it. and and you really have to rely on your calculator, by the way, um, I would prefer using it because in exam, you don't sim you simply don't want to make any mistake. So um, try to practice with your calculator as often as possible. Last question is actually quite interesting. There are five poles in total in the street and the car will accelerate from the beginning until uh, pole four and it will stop accelerating. It doesn't mean it will stop moving it just stop accelerating. That means the velocity would maintain the same. And if the time is measured between each pole, so say a timer start here and stop here, and also start another timer and then stop here, uh, and that should be the same for all of these, then which of the time would be the greatest? So interpreting this question as the time is greatest, you have to understand uh, the time is related to the velocity that you have. So velocity is the displacement over time. If Let me tell you a way to uh, visualize this. If you have to got the equation, if you want to find the greatest time, put it up, like upward arrow. And since the distance or displacement between the pole is fixed, right, it's equal distance, so put it cross, right, for constant value. And so in this case, then you can deduce mathematically, if t increase, then v must decrease. That means you want to find the lowest or the smallest velocity. And that is to say, it must be at the beginning, because when you start to accelerate, it must be the slowest. So the answer would then be a, simply. Let me give you a bonus question. What if the question with the same setting uh, change the question into the shortest time instead. What will your answer be? Think about it and I'll explain to you. The answer would then be D, 
all right, which is the last session of the poll. Uh, some of you may be wondering, I'm not sure if you're wondering or not, uh, whether or not the time between 4 to 5 and the time between 3 to 4 will be the same. And the answer is, is it's not, because between 3 to 4, it is still accelerating. And so you may imagine, uh, say, this is 30 km per hour, this is 40 km per hour, and this is still 40 km per hour. So what it means is that between pole 4 and pole 5, it's maintaining 40 km per hour all the time. All right, so between pole 3 and 4, it is increasing the, the velocity. So maybe from 30 to 40, it, of course, it has to go from 30, 31, 32, 33, etc. until 40. So uh, imagine the speed or velocity at the beginning, at the very beginning of this path, then of course it's less than 40. Actually, only when you reach to here, then you are 40. So obviously the time between pole 3 and 4 will be longer because it is somewhat slower than the later section. So the answer will be D. That's all for this part of video. I hope now you understand the idea of velocity and acceleration much more. So in the next video, we'll start to talk about the graph. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.